Good day everyone, in this video we're going to discuss qualitative research designs. But before anything else, let's have a short review of what qualitative research is. Qualitative research is a type of research that focuses on explaining the reality of the world through the perspectives of the participants. Also, Qualitative research is characterized by the researcher's active involvement when interacting with participants when gathering data in the natural setting. And lastly, in qualitative research, the results of the research study tend to be subjective as it is affected by the perceptions and opinions of the respondents based on their experiences. Now that we have discussed what qualitative research is, the next question is, what are the different types of qualitative research designs? It is worth noting that qualitative research has different types, namely case studies, ethnography, phenomenology, historical analysis, grounded theory, and content and discourse analysis. Now at this point, we're going to talk about the different types of qualitative research designs, starting with case studies. Case studies involve a long time and in-depth study of a person, group, organization, or situation or phenomenon. Case studies are often used to narrow down a very broad field of research into one or a few easily researchable examples. It is worth noting that case studies are also useful for testing whether a specific theory and model actually applies to phenomena in the real world. With this in mind, let's have this example wherein we have a study on how students' vocabulary development is influenced by their environment. The theory is that environment influences a person's vocabulary acquisition and development. With this in mind, the researcher would then observe different groups of students. One group of students would be enrolled in humanities and social sciences strand, while the other group of students would be enrolled in the strand of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Since case studies would involve a long time, the researcher would have multiple observations, starting with the beginning of the senior high school years, in the middle of the senior high school, and at the end of the senior high school years of the students. From there, the researcher could compare whether there's an actual difference or similarities in terms of the manner of conversation, expressions used, and known vocabulary words between the humanities and social sciences group and the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics group. Based on the results, the researcher would then be able to come up with conclusions and recommendations. Next, we have ethnography. Ethnography involves studying a particular cultural group in order to get a clear understanding of their belief systems and practices. Ethnography also aims to have a more in-depth understanding of the organizational setup and lifestyle of the members of the group. It is also worth noting that ethnography falls under the field of anthropology. With this in mind, let's have this example wherein we're going to have a study that observes the culture and practice of people living in far-flung areas away from modernization. With this in mind, the researcher would observe a group of people who are members of a group who are living in far-flung areas. The researcher then directly interacts with these group of people through interviews, observations, and immersion. These kinds of practices help the researcher have first-hand experience of the practice of the members of the group, as well as obtain first-hand testimonies from the research participants and present accurate reports regarding the research subject since the researcher is able to interact with them directly and personally. However, in ethnography, since the research involves a particular group of people, the results are context-specific. When we say context-specific, it means that the findings are applicable only to that specific group of people and not to the general public. Next, we have Phenomenology. Phenomenology aims to examine the human experience regarding a certain phenomenon. Also, it recognizes that each experience is unique and meaningful. 
As such, one of the objectives of phenomenology is to present a detailed discussion of the lived experience of the participants that are involved in the study. With this in mind, let's have this example wherein a researcher aims to recognize the different strategies used by foreign students to adapt to new language learning environments. Based on this example, the researcher would involve different foreign students who are studying in a particular country. From there, the researcher then interacts with the participants through interviews such as focus group discussions or in-depth interviews. During these discussions or interviews, the researcher would then be able to identify the different experiences, struggles, as well as the adapting strategies that are used by the participants, and from there, the researcher would be able to come up with a detailed discussion of results. The next type of qualitative research design is historical analysis. Historical analysis involves the examination of primary documents to make you understand the connection of past events to the present time. In historical analysis, researchers rely on primary sources of historical data. Let's have this example wherein we're going to discuss the development of the educational system in the Philippines. With this in mind, a researcher needs to have primary sources of historical data. Some examples would be direct accounts of events, archival data, official documents, personal records, and eyewitness records. Once the researcher is able to have an analysis of these sources of information, the researcher would then be able to identify how the educational system in the past is connected with the educational system in the present in terms of policy changes, trend shifts, teaching strategy developments, and update in the materials that have been used. Next, we focus on content and discourse analysis. This type of qualitative research design requires an analysis or examination of text or content of the modes of communication. Furthermore, according to publichealth.columbia.edu, content and discourse analysis is conducted for the following reasons. One would be to identify the intentions, focus, or communication trends of an individual, group, or institution. Another would be to describe the attitudinal and behavioral responses to communications, to reveal international differences in terms of communication content, reveal the patterns in communication content, and to determine the psychological or emotional state of a person or groups. For example, if a researcher wants to determine or understand the language of journalism, as mentioned earlier, the researcher would then have an analysis of the different modes of communication, such as journals, articles, and audiovisual materials. Based on this analysis, the researcher would then be able to identify how journalism jargons or the language of journalism has similarities and differences in terms of regular communication jargons. And lastly, we have grounded theory. This takes place when a researcher discovers a new theory to underlie his study at the time of data collection and analysis. Also, Grounded theory helps offer an explanation about the main concern of the participants involved in the research. We have to take note that in grounded theory, a researcher, through various means of data collection such as interviews, observations, fieldwork, focus group discussions, and study of artifacts and texts, is able to discover an idea that would explain the how and why behind a particular phenomenon. Now at this point, we're going to have a short summary of the different types of qualitative research designs. In terms of objectives, case studies are conducted in order to have an in-depth examination about a particular case or phenomenon, while ethnography is done to help the researcher learn more about the life and practice of a different group of people or a specific group of people.
Phenomenology is conducted to provide a detailed discussion of the meaningful experiences of the participants, while historical analysis aims to identify the connections between past and present events. Content and discourse analysis is also conducted to analyze the different modes of communication in order to determine possible differences, while grounded theory is done in order to discover a possible explanation behind a particular phenomenon. When it comes to data gathering, case studies involve interviews, observations, direct interaction with participants and may have multiple sessions. While ethnography, while it also involves interviews, observations, immersions, it is done within a specific time frame. With regard to data gathering for phenomenology, it involves interviews, observations, focus group discussions, and done at a specific time. While historical analysis involves analysis of primary sources of data, which may involve also interviews with experts of the topic. For content and discourse analysis, it involves analysis or examination of text or content of the different modes of communication. And grounded theory involves interviews, observations, different kinds of fieldwork, study of artifacts, and texts. Now, when it comes to sampling, all the different qualitative research designs would have relatively smaller population sample. All population samples are context-specific and are carefully selected, meaning to say that when it comes to selecting participants, researchers conducting a qualitative research would usually involve purposive sampling. Participants may be experts or people who are knowledgeable with regard to the topic that is being studied, group members of a specific group that is being the focus of a certain study or witnesses or those who have first-hand experiences with regard to a particular topic or phenomenon that is being covered in a study. In a nutshell, qualitative research is characterized by the involvement of the opinions, ideas, beliefs, and perspectives of the selected participants as a result of their meaningful experiences. Much like quantitative research, qualitative research also has various research designs, each with characteristics and procedures that would help a researcher achieve his objectives. When deciding to conduct a qualitative research, it is necessary that researchers become familiar with how each qualitative research design is different in order to determine which is most suitable for their research goals.